Hi. Now, what we've got here is an example on hypothesis testing, and there's often two ways that we can do hypothesis testing. And I'm going to show you one method, which is the critical value method. So, what we've got here is an estate agent has been selling houses at a rate of eight per month, and she believes that the rate of sales will decrease in the next month. And the estate agent is surprised to find that she actually sold 13 houses in the next month. And she now claims that this is evidence of an increase in the rate of sales per month. And what we've got to do is test the estate agent's claim at the 5% level of significance, stating your hypothesis clearly. So if you haven't tried this question already and want to give it a go, just pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Let's just see how you got on. Well, the first thing I'd want to do is to define a random variable. So I'm going to say, let x be the random variable, number of houses sold per month. And the distribution that this would follow, we'll just say where x is distributed, is going to be a Poisson distribution. We've got house sales occurring at a mean rate. A mean rate of 8 per month. Now, I'm not going to put 8 in here because we're going to be testing this mean rate, okay? So I'm just going to call it lambda. What we're assuming is that the null hypothesis, H0, is going to be lambda, the mean is equal to 8. But we see that in the following month, 13 houses are sold. So that's more than the mean rate. So it seems as if the mean rate has increased. So we'll put the alternative hypothesis, H1, is that lambda, the mean rate, is now increased from 8. It's greater than 8. And we're basing this observation on the fact that we observed that 13 houses were sold. So put that observed value as being 13. And we're testing at the 5% nominal level of significance. So I'm going to put alpha here is 5%. OK, so we're looking at a method called the critical value method here of solving this problem. And to demonstrate this, we'll just have a number line here. OK, and we've got our value, our null hypothesis, that lambda, the mean rate, is 8. And we can expect the sales to vary round 8, OK? But we're not too sure at this stage what is acceptable. This is the acceptable region, but we're not sure where this kind of boundary point is. So if I just section that off, we'll call that value there R, the critical value. So when you're in this area here, this is the acceptable region where we accept the null hypothesis. And if you go into this region, this is where we reject the null hypothesis. I can just squeeze it in here, reject the null hypothesis. We'll just put reject HO there. OK? And to find out what this critical value is, we can just say here, for that critical value R. We would find it by saying that the probability of x being greater than or equal to that critical value, given that we're working with a null hypothesis that lambda, in other words, equals 8, this probability must be less than 5%. OK? Less than or equal to, I should say, 5%. So in order to find out what R is, OK, I'm going to be wanting to use the cumulative Poisson distribution tables that work out the probability of being less than or equal to a given value. And so I can't use them at the moment when I've got a greater than or equal to here. So I need to change this around. So I can say that this statement, the probability of x being greater than or equal to a given value R, is the same as 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 1 less than this value. So it would be r minus 1. 
given that the mean lambda is equal to 8. And that's got to be less than or equal to the 5%. Just imagine if you take any number here, just in case this is causing a little bit of confusion, just imagine that R was say 10 for instance. It isn't necessarily, but let's just say if I was working out the probability X was greater than or equal to 10, it's the same as 1 minus the probability X is less than or equal to 9. One less than that value. Alright? Okay, now I just need to rearrange this to make this probability the subject. So if I was to take away our 5% from 1, okay, and add this probability to both sides, I'd have 1 minus the 5%, 1 minus 0.05 would give us 0.95, equivalent to 95%. And this probability would have to be greater than or equal to that. So the probability that x is less than or equal to r minus 1 given that the mean is 8, or given that the null hypothesis is true, has got to be greater than or equal to 95%, or as a decimal, 0.95. Now we're going to need our tables now, so I'm just going to write from tables here. So if we get the tables out, where we're looking where the mean lambda equals 8, Okay, look down your observed values here and you're looking for a value that just, the first value that just beats 0.95, that just exceeds it. Well, if we come down through here, you'll see at 12 it's 0.9362. Well, that doesn't exceed 0.95, but the next value is 13. 13 is the first value that exceeds 0.95. And it's this value that we're looking at. So from tables, r minus 1, okay, must be equal to the 13. Which means that therefore, r must be equal to 14 if we add 1 to both sides. So the critical value here is 14 then. Now we've got 13 houses okay are sold so if the critical value here is 14 then 13 clearly is going to be in the acceptable region okay so there's no evidence then to suggest that the mean has increased so we need to write a conclusion and I've taken an extract from the mark scheme on this okay and this is what they say so as long as you write something along these lines. Okay, so there's insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Or you could say it's not significant or not in the critical region. And to summarize then, there is insufficient evidence of an increase or change in the rate per number of sales per month. Or the estate agent's claim is incorrect. Okay, so... I hope that's given you some idea across this problem if you did have some difficulty. Um, there are plenty of other examples on my website, examsolutions.net, tutorials on this as well. Okay, so I uh, hope you'll look at those as well if you need any further backup.